Welcome back. We just followed Dr. Miklos out of her office and she appears to have moved the head of the statue of the thinker and we heard something move. So let's follow her. See what she did. This seems to be a dead end. The shiny marble floor reflects your image, ghost-like, in its mottled surface. The walls in this hallway are dark and foreboding. I kind of agree. Heavy stone masonry. Each block must weigh hundreds of pounds. There does seem to be a seam in this wall. There is definitely a seam in the bricks. You detect a bit of airflow. Yes, you might even say a subtle draft emerging from the seam. I would guess that that's where Dr. Miklos went. The seam in the bricks is very deep. The draft from the seam ruffles your hair as you examine the rough bricks. But it seems to have closed behind her. And the thinker has also returned to normal. Let's see if we can figure out what happened there. The sculpture has a beautiful face. Its strong but sensitive lines remind you of Steve. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Looking a little closer, you detect a seam along the sculpture's otherwise flawless neck. Is that so? Yes. There is definitely a seam in the statue's neck. It seems to go most of the way around. There's a tiny hinge on the back of the neck. Indeed. Let's see if we can move that the way Olympia did. We could. And it opened a secret passage. Uh, and oh the light bulb dear. burned out. The light bulb blew out. You hope someone will invent a reliable light bulb one of these days. I'm afraid you'll have to wait for... Um, LED, which will be quite a while. Let's see if we can navigate these stairs. I guess we can't. Nice swan dive off the stairway. Well, we hadn't had a death in a while, so... I guess it was about time. Yeah, you can't go down these stairs without the light. It's a burnt-out light bulb. Too bad, since this stairwell could definitely use some light. Your magnifying glass doesn't help. It's just too dark to see. I didn't think that was going to help. You can barely see a narrow, treacherous spiral staircase descending into the depths of the black stairwell. Okay. Yep, those spiral staircases always get us in Sierra games. Maybe we just need to, like... Reseat the light bulb? Ouch! Nope. It's also too hot to touch, so... That's not very helpful. There's actually one thing in Dr. Miklos's office that I hadn't looked at. Which is this... Skull, I think it is? The skull of the long-extinct horned rhesus known in academic circles to be the source of much controversy regarding it as evidence for the extraterrestrial origin of primate evolution. Okay, that does seem a bit weird. Hey! Um, okay, didn't know that was gonna happen immediately. Yeah, and Laura just automatically walks into the passage, which is dark.
In the darkness of the secret passage, you're blind as a bat. You have a brave but brief battle, during which you endured a battering of the berserk and bellicose black bats without batting an eye. Then your body, bothered by bloody bites, becomes bereft of life. Nice alliteration there. But not quite the outcome that we wanted. The reason I didn't look at that the first time is because I didn't have a save game and I couldn't save in that room. Yeah, there's no way to stop you from going into uh, that passage once you open it, so you can't find out that it's too dark to go into without dying, which, as you know, is one of the things I don't particularly like when games do. They kill you without warning like that. I mean, was it really that hard to just say, this passage is too dark, and then give you at least a chance to turn back? I think you can actually notice the fact that there's this seam there that you can move if you use the magnifying glass. I kind of clicked on it with the hand by accident, not realizing it would immediately just open. Anyway, we can come back to that later when we have some kind of light source, hopefully. Why are there so many secret passages in this museum, by the way? And they're all too dark. Hopefully we can kill two birds with one stone if we get a light source that works for the passage in Miklos's office, we can also use it to descend to the stairs. Anyway, uh, let's see if, if Veth's office is still locked. It is not. That's good to know. A scuffed wooden floor. Looks aren't everything. Looks aren't everything. I'm just trying to get her to say that it's a vet's office, but I'm not having much luck. Watercolor painting, Predators Stalking Prey, by Yvette Delacroix, 1925. Oh, she makes her own art! Nice watercolor brushwork, even though it was painted during a turbulent period in the life of the artist. <laughs> hmm. Could she be in on the art forgery? Although, watercolor painting is very different from oil painting, so... possibly not. Watercolor painting, Perverse Pleasures by Yvette Delacroix, 1926. The subject matter is uh, not surprising, considering the artist. The marvelous thrusting brushwork demonstrates the artist's close association with the subject, in which she obviously finds deep meaning and significance. I don't doubt it. Watercolor Painting, Purple Pollywogs Playing in Puddles by Yvette Delacroix, 1924. Mediocre watercolor brushwork, but subtle nuances of shading and form admirably serve to get Yvette's point across. I guess this is the oldest one, so she must have improved. A matched pair of crossed battle axes left over from this room's previous occupant. I don't trust those battle axes, but I can't save. They're too high on the wall. Besides, you have no use for them. Good. They're too high on the wall to be examined that way. A trash can. Or something in the trash A can. A used piece of carbon paper. Carbon paper. I wonder how many of my viewers actually remember what that is or have used it in their life. You pick it up and place it in your purse. Carbon paper, for those of you who don't know, is a sheet of paper made from carbon that is placed underneath another sheet of paper so that whatever you write gets copied down onto the paper below it as you are writing it, so you end up with two copies of what you wrote. Still used sometimes in forms. It's used carbon paper. Carbon paper itself, though, doesn't really seem to... There are words typed on the carbon paper, but you can't read them this way. Yeah, that's too hard to read it on the carbon paper themselves. But perhaps we can find a way to make that clearer. We do have a light sitting right here. 
backlit, you can read the words typed into the carbon paper. Ernie, Big Al called to see if you could do some fencing for him next week. He says he'll make it worth your while to do a fast fencing job. Okay. Evidence of a fencing operation going on at the museum. Could that have something to do with the... With the uh, forged paintings? Maybe Ernie is fencing the originals? Hmm. Interesting. Also, light bulb. That would not be very uh, helpful with the passage in Olympia's office, but maybe we can replace the light bulb in the hallway, in the staircase. The light bulb is on. You find it very illuminating. Indeed. The light bulb is on. Wow, the same description for the magnifying glass. They're getting lazy. Ouch! The light bulb is too hot to remove. That is not surprising. It is on, after all. Let's turn it off. Can we remove it now? Although the light bulb is starting to cool, it's still too hot to handle. I guess we need to wait a little bit. Realistic, at least. One of those new portable typewriters. At a mere 50 pounds, you can take it anywhere. Well, you could if it was useful to you, which it isn't, so forget it. Okay. No want to take it? You don't need to type anything. The typewriter keys hold fingerprints that probably belong to Yvette. Probably, but there were no fingerprints at the murder scene, so kind of useless to us at this point. Looks like another intercom. It's an intercom slave unit. Yep. Are we going to do the same thing here? Upon close inspection, you see nothing new here. Nope. You don't need to type. Since it's just a slave intercom unit, it has no buttons and can only receive messages. Indeed. We already discovered that with Olympia's unit. That's not the... All right, all right. There's a homey old Norwegian phrase stitched into this needle point. An axe in the hand is worth two in the bush. Words to live by. Yep. Definitely. Nice needle point stitchery with some dust stuck to it. Filing cabinets. The file label reads Renaissance Masters Collection. Oh, great. The file label reads Dead Things. Dead Things. The file label reads Paleontological Anomalies. The file label reads Personnel Files. The file label reads Egyptian Artifacts. The question, of course, the is... The file label reads Medieval Armor Collection. Is there going to be anything important in any of these the files? The file label reads Renaissance Masters Collection. The file label reads Machu Picchu Field Survey. So far, all stuff you would expect to see in a museum. The file label reads Museum Artifact Research Exchanges. The file label reads Life Mask Collection. All stuff we've seen. The file label reads Life Mask Field Survey. The file label reads Taxidermy Records. The file label reads Alcoholic Preservation Collection. I wonder where that is. We haven't seen that yet. The file label reads... The file label reads... Insurance. Sure, that's important. The file label reads... Accounting. The file label reads... Sexual eccentricities. That must be Yvette's personal drawer. The file label reads... Shannon Rat Collection. Nothing immediately jumps the out. The file drawer is locked. Yvette is the only person who can open it. The wood file drawer. I think they're all locked. Oh well. It's a Venus flytrap. Has it trapped any flies recently? Don't even think about touching the flytrap. It's a meat-eating plant that's been getting a steady diet of red meat ever since Yvette bought it. And it's getting hungry again. 
They eat flies. Not people. A handwritten card attached to the plant pot reads, To Yvette from Olympia. Thanks for the wild night with the mummies. I'm sure I don't want to know. Paper cutter over here. A paper cutter with a sharp blade. And you can move it. Doesn't kill you though, so that's the good. The paper cutter blade looks well maintained and sharp enough to cut through almost anything. I find that hard to believe. Most paper cutter cutters I've come across in my life can barely cut through more than two slices of paper. Two sheets of paper, is what I mean. It's a diploma with Yvette Delacroix's name on it. An advanced degree in French from Ball State University to be exact. Upon close inspection, you see nothing new here. Well, at least it doesn't say that it's fake, I guess. It's a transom. Is that what those are called? I guess so. It's too high. Well, I wonder what's through there. This is Yvette's office, and Yvette is the assistant to Dr. Carrington, so one would expect... Indeed. Dr. Carrington's office. You hear muffled voices coming through the door to Yvette's office. Oh, and there seems like there's more eavesdropping to do. Come a little closer, Monsieur Najir. I am wanting to show you something. And what would that be, Miss Delacroix? Look at the palm of my hand. It is a lovely palm, to be sure. But what am I supposed to see? You see this line, monsieur? It is my love line. My goodness, Miss Delacroix. It goes all the way up your arm and disappears up your sleeve. Would you like to see where it ends up, Ramses? Um, I, uh, well, um... Have you ever been to Paris, Ramses? No, um, I can't say I ever have. Then, you have never seen the Eiffel Tower? No. Well, by all means, let me show you. Miss Delacroix, please. I'm a married man. Oh, dear. Have you forgotten who let you into the museum, Ramses? Have you forgotten who showed you the secret room for your little ceremonies? You haven't, have you? No, I haven't, but... Then you will let me give you the grand tour of the tower, no? <laughs> we'll have to go somewhere else. I don't feel safe here. Please the way, monsieur. Well, that was suspicious and interesting. I mean, the fact that Yvette wants to sleep with Ramsay is fine, but the fact that, there, that he apparently is using a secret room for some kind of ceremonies? That I find interesting. Um, let's take a look around. This is Dr. Carrington's office. Looks aren't everything. The night sky is seen from New York City in 1926. It's a very nice ceiling. The tribal death mask of the Hottentots. More stuff to look Upon at here. close inspection, you see nothing new here. The mask of El Wuppentot, the god who scares Hottentot children. Hottentot elders told stories of how El Wuppentot would jump down from the roofs of Hottentot mud huts to steal the noses off children who didn't behave properly. Anthropologists attribute the El Wuppentot stories to tribal myth. But the ancient records reveal that many Hottentots lived their adult lives without noses. There's a moral here somewhere. I mean, this sounds made up, but it also sounds like exactly the kind of weird story people would tell, so... That's not the sort of thing you want to examine too closely. I guess not. A painting? It's a portrait of the former Lion Decker Museum president. Sterling Waldorf Carlton. Oh, the Countess's husband. 
Interesting. It might be a trick of the light, but one side of the painting seems closer to the wall than the other. Does it now? I wonder... Yes, it opens and reveals a safe. With a code. Looks aren't everything. One, two, three, four. That was not it. Very surprising, that. Look. It's a wall safe. Which we can't open right now. It's a fireplace, and charcoal. it looks like there's some charcoal in there. The charcoal smudges your fingers. As it would. We can take it, however. You pick it up and place it in your purse. And, um, this charcoal might help us reveal what Dr. Carter wrote in his notepad. Let's see what it says. Rubbing the charcoal over the notepad has made the imprint readable. Yvette, 8 o'clock, Egyptian room. Tut, 1015, Egyptian room. Carrington, 11 o'clock, his office. Seems like these are appointments that uh, Dr. Carter made. Wait, didn't he say that he was going to meet Yvette at like 3 a.m. during the party? Apparently he's meeting uh, Dr. Smith at 10.15 in the Egyptian room, and it was 10, a, uh, 10 p.m. when we started this act, so that should be pretty soon. And indeed, that's the thing that you have to hurry for. If you take too much time, the clock will strike 10.15 and you will miss that particular engagement. And, um, I think you do get more than 15 minutes, but it's still pretty hard. And in fact, I already had to, uh, start the act over and do things quickly once in this, at the start of this recording, in fact, because otherwise the clock already struck 1015 during the video, which of course I don't want to happen. Just letting you know again, if you're playing this yourself, this isn't the time to look at things. <laughs> you just don't have the ability to do so if you want to be on time for this particular thing. Alright. What else is in here? Quite a lot. A desk lamp. That's not very interesting. A painting of the New York skyline by Sterling Waldorf Carlton, dated 1920. Upon close inspection, you see nothing new here. Wait, does this A lamp have light bulb? Upon close inspection... Nope, I guess not. Looks aren't everything. Numerous hefty tomes on the topic of medieval armor. I think we already heard more than enough about medieval armor. First editions of classic literature. Looks. Numerous hefty tomes. Just books. Look. Numerous. The war mask of the Poppentart tribe. The Poppentarts would strike fear into the hearts of their enemies, the Hottentots, by wearing these masks into battle and screaming their battle cry, Pop goes the weasel! Which translates roughly as, Go back to your own side of the river, you Hottentot wimps! The Hottentots hated the Poppentarts primarily because the Poppentarts kept stealing all the Hottentot women. Actually, the Hottentot women kept defecting to the Poppentart tribe because they had better food better villages, and men who bathed regularly. You might say that the Poppentarts were the first yuppies. Okay. Presumably they also had noses. The Mask of El Bupentat, the Hottentot God of War. Hottentot warriors would invoke their God of War with a battle cry, Boop Boop-a-doop, 
This battle cry reputedly struck fear into the hearts of their enemies, who were usually the Poppentarts who lived across the river. Again, sounds likely. The President's Chair. Ooh, fancy. Upon close inspection. Don't touch it. You don't know where it's been. I wanted to sit in it. I guess I can't. What's here? There's a phone. It's the only telephone in the museum. It's the... Really? Just one? It appears that someone has cut the telephone cord, removing any chance you might have had of communication with the outside world. Okay. Suspicious again. As with so many other things in this museum, this phone is dead. <laughs> oh my god. Carrington's desk. It's not what I was trying to look at. A phone Using list. Using your remarkable powers of deduction, you conclude that this little book contains phone numbers. That seems to be a safe bet. Phone numbers. T. Dargan, WP5125. R. Williams, BL4468. I did it. SH0244. Be safe. KL0527. U. Hoser, LI2077. And yet, KL4004. E. Leach, BR1833. Okay, some of those looked a bit weird, those names. Some of them sounded like they might have been made up. The handwriting is neat and dark. Can we take it? Don't touch it. You don't know where it's been. I guess not. One of those um, suspicious names was something someone called Be Safe. Phone number KL0527. Which sounds like a KLM flight number, but whatever. And the reason it's suspicious is because we have a safe here that requires a four-digit code. So maybe it is zero, five, two, seven. It is. It feels. What? It feels safe, apparently. I was trying to open it, though. What is in there? Another notebook? It's the personal diary of former museum president Sterling Waldorf Carlton. Interesting. Glancing through the diary and the male handwriting within, it refers to Sterling's growing fear that the Countess only married him for his money and that she could be planning to kill him. The final entry reads, Yvette fears her too. Interesting. We kind of already suspected that that was the Countess's motive. She wasn't exactly very good at hiding that. It is interesting that uh, apparently the former president was involved with Yvette. I don't know how involved, but at least enough to be talking to her about the, his concerns about the Countess. Not wanting to remove evidence from the crime scene, particularly when you must have broken some sort of law by opening the president's personal wall safe, you decide not to remove the diary. First, removing evidence from corpses, that's just fine. Okay then. Can I close it the feel, safe? It feels. It feels. The answer it is feels. no. Oh, the answer is yes. I can close it, it's just hard to do. Okay, anything else? Countess and Ziggy at 1 a.m. Medieval armor display. Interesting. A meeting going on at 1 a.m. That is definitely 
another thing we want to check out at that time. A handsome desk clock. Yes, it's definitely a desk clock. It says made in Switzerland in the fine print on the clock face, which you can barely read due to the glare on the glass. So we cannot unfortunately see what time it is. Don't touch it. You don't know where it's been. Ooh, another intercom. It's the latest thing in office telecommunications technology. An intercom master unit. You touch the intercom unit, completely missing the buttons. And the whole point, apparently. The six-button intercom allows the president to talk and listen to people in other offices. I wonder if there's something we can overhear with this. Oh, that did nothing. Probably need to turn it on first. You touch the... The intercom crackles and you overhear a conversation. Oh, I so love your scars, Wolfie. Show them to me again, darling. They are yours to admire, my strudel. Hoopa! Very, very nice. Yeah, and I have this new bone for your collection. Ah, such a large bone, too. Where did you find it? I've been carrying this bone around for years. It is yours now, my Fraulein. You may do with it what you will. I'm impressed by your generosity, Wolfie. Ew! If they were talking about what they think they were talking about, I really don't want to know. You touch... The intercom crackles and you overhear a conversation. Oh, my lover, how do you manage to do it so many times? Sure, and a man's got to do what a man's got to do. And you do it so well. Try and keep your voice down, lass. Someone might hear us. Oh, I do not care, my amour. Life, she is something we only enjoy once. Sure, and Bigora, I do this at least 50 times a day to stay in shape. 50 times, ooh la la, and what do you call this movement? Sit-ups, lass. I also do 50 push-ups each day, then I run a few miles. Okay, well that wasn't what it sounded like, at least. Is the vet just going around with everybody? Seems like it. The intercom crackles, and you overhear a conversation. I'm telling you, pal, you're not supposed to be down here. Nothing poison old mech, but Archie said I could scope the place out. Well, he didn't say anything to me about it. Neither did Mr. Hamlock. And he's the chief of security. It's okay, Mac. Don't get used britches in an uproar. Trust me! <laughs> I'd only trust you about as far as I can throw you. Hey now, there ain't no need for fiscal violence, Mac. I'll give you ten seconds. If you aren't out of my sight by then, I'm gonna hurt you real bad. You're touchy, ain't ya? But I was done down here anyways. See you around, Mac! Not if I can help it. Alright. That's uh, interesting. Ziggy sneaking around where he's not supposed to, I guess. Not that surprising. When you press the button, all you hear is static. When you press the button, all you hear is static. And the you last one. When you press the button, all you hear is static. No more conversations, I guess. I guess that's the talk button. The six button in... Doesn't tell you anything specific about the buttons when you look at them. Also a big porcupine sitting here. It's President Carrington's stuffed porcupine, Spiny Norman. I'm sure it is. The stiff quills look especially sharp under magnification. Ouch! Those quills are sharp! 
I'm sure they would be. Locked drawers. Don't touch it. You don't know where it's been. I just wanted to confirm that they were locked, but I guess they are, so we can't look in there. Nothing else here, nor can we go further to the right, so let's go back out. Well, that's great. The time just turned 10.15, which means we've missed some stuff. I took too long, as I knew would happen. And unfortunately, there really is only one thing that I can do to fix that. And that is... Do it again. <laughs> and we're back. Yep, that really is what I need to do here because obviously if I look at stuff, there's no way I can do this in time. And that's actually the second time this happened. Unfortunately, the first time happened in between videos, so I did not show it to you. But I figured I might as well show you what I'm going through to get this uh, done properly. This may not be the last time that that happens. Anyway, since we did everything in the uh, in uh, Carrington's office, we're good now. And our light bulb here should have cooled off, hopefully. Oh, damn it. You have to look at it again to actually get it. The game is nice enough at least that Turning it on briefly does not make it too hot again. You pick it up and place it in your purse. And with that, we have a way to illuminate the spiral staircase. Although unfortunately not the secret passage in Olympia's room. However, we'll check out the spiral staircase in the next video.